Well, hi, this is Robert, and welcome to today's show. And again, trying to uh, keep you updated on what's going on with the novel coronavirus outbreak that originated out of Wuhan City, China. A daunting task. This is rapid fire information coming out all the time, and it's it's very very difficult. But uh, let's take a look at some of the latest stuff. And this morning, as you, if you, you may have seen on the website outbreaknewstoday.com, reported the third uh, confirmed novel coronavirus case in the United States in Orange County, California. Well, since I just recently got back home after a busy day out and about, um, I see another report out of California, and this one is from Los Angeles County. And the Los Angeles County Department of Health confirmed the first case of 2019 novel coronavirus in Los Angeles County. The infected person presented themselves for care once they noticed they were not feeling well and is currently receiving medical treatment. And they say there's no immediate threat to the general public, no special precautions. Um, and uh, other information we, we do know about this case is this, this person is a returning traveler from Wuhan City, China. Uh, the person was confirmed by the CDC as the state public health labs, as of today, they still do not have um, testing capabilities for the novel coronavirus. So each state, when they get a suspicious uh, case, they send the samples to the CDC, who has the only testing capability in the U.S. to date. That will change soon. Uh, the person is currently receiving appropriate care at a local hospital. Um, and their work, public health officials are working to identify persons who may have had close contact with this individual, including friends, family members, healthcare professionals, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that's the fourth case in the United States, unless something's happened while I'm recording and, um, not a big surprise. And, and later in the show, I'll show you some other countries that have seen, uh, increases in cases recently too. And there's quite a few countries that have seen cases already. It's it's at least over a dozen for sure. So, all right. The next thing I wanted to talk about is this report out of China. And this says, um, National, Wuhan Pneumonia, National Health and Medical Commission, the incubation period of the virus at its um, shortest is one day. And this is... Uh, out of a Chinese news source, so it's translated. So um, cut me a little slack on that. But it says the outbreak of new coronavirus pneumonia continues to spread. 30 provinces, municipalities, and autonomous regions on the mainland, in the mainland China have initiated first-level responses to major public health emergencies. Um, and some key information, according to Ma Zhaowei, from the perspective of gene sequencing, the new coronavirus is different from SARS and MERS. The new coronavirus is contagious during the incubation period, very important piece of information, which is very different from SARS. And he also says that the outbreak is, ex is expected to continue for some time. He pointed out that the point of view of transmission characteristics, the patient's early body temperature was not high or normal. There were many mild cases. The infectivity of the virus has increased and the source of the infection um, has greatly increased the difficulty of prevention and control. Uh, the understanding of the new coronavirus is very limited and the source of infection has not yet been found. Uh, the mechanism of transmission and the risk of mutation is still unclear. Um, let me go on to say that he said that according to the experience during the SARS period, which was 2002-2003, it took three to four months from the discovery um, to the outbreak. From the observations of some early mild patients, the incubation period is about 10 days. Uh, the shortest incubation period is one day and the longest was about 14 days. The incubation period is contagious, which is very different from SARS, as I've already said. He said this. He said that from the speed of the development of the epidemic, the epidemic will continue for some time. Uh, not surprising, uh, but clearly something nobody really wanted to hear. Um, with the implementation of personal control measures within Wuhan, corres corresponding measures on health emergencies at the first level have been proposed throughout the country. 
the prevention and control efforts will continue to further be strengthened. Um, the prevention and control measures will continue to take effect uh, within a period of time. And eventually the epidemic will fall. So that's what we have out of China. That's some of the latest information. Now, something we've been uh, monitoring is this work coming out of the Imperial College of London. And they've been doing this analysis of the Wuhan uh, coronavirus. And their latest report says this. Self-sustaining human-to-human transmission of the novel coronavirus is the only plausible explanation of the scale of the outbreak in Wuhan. We estimate that, on average, each case infected 2.6, with a range of about 1.5 to 3.5, other people, up to January 18th of this year. Based on an analysis combining our past estimates of the size of the outbreak in Wuhan, with computational modeling of potential epidemic trajectories. Uh, This implies that control measures need to block well over 60% of transmission to be effective in controlling the outbreak. It is likely, based on experience of SARS and MERS coronavirus, that the number of secondary cases caused by a case of 2019 novel coronavirus is highly variable, with many cases causing no secondary infections and a few causing many. So anyway, so that's where we're getting out. That it looks like the um, the RO is somewhere hovering around 2.6, according to uh, the Imperial College of London. And some other information that came out, and actually somebody shared this with me on, on Facebook recently, and that's concerning um, the title of this paper. I don't think it's been peer-reviewed yet. But it's out of China, and it's it's titled Discovery of Novel Coronavirus Associated with a Recent Pneumonia Outbreak in Humans and Its Potential Bat Origin. And I just want to read a few uh, lines out of this. It says, full-length genome sequences were obtained from five patients at the early stage of the outbreak. They are almost identical to each other and share about a 79.5% sequence identified to SARS coronavirus. Furthermore, it was found that the novel coronavirus 2019 is 96% identical at the whole genome level to a bat coronavirus. The pairwise protein sequence analysis of seven conserved non-structural proteins show that this virus belongs to the species of SARS coronavirus. The novel coronavirus 2019 virus was then isolated from the bronchial bronchoalveolar lavage fluid of a critically ill patient, which can be neutralized by sera from several patients. Importantly, we have confirmed that this novel coronavirus uses the same cell entry receptor, ACE2, as SARS coronavirus. So, in a nutshell, it's pretty similar to SARS coronavirus, but there are differences. Um, So that's, and this kind of goes against that other study that came out of China, which was suggesting that maybe the coronavirus was due to us due to snakes. And that's been debunked um, or questioned if not, if not debunked, it's been questioned by a lot of scientists um, throughout the world. Okay. All right. So in China, it's about 17 cities uh, that have been on lockdown now. And the U.S. State Department has ordered the evacuation of all U.S. personnel at the consulate in Wuhan, China. Um, Other important news that came out of this. Hong Kong city leader Carrie Lam declared a state of emergency and said all primary and secondary schools would close until February 17th. Um, Two more weeks in addition to the next week's Lunar New Year holiday or the Chinese New Year. Um... Let's see. And a new study published in The Lancet identified five of six family members with coronavirus. Quote, from January 10th, we enrolled a family of six patients who traveled to Wuhan from Shenzhen between December 29th, 2019 and January 4th, 2020. Of the six family members who traveled to Wuhan, five were identified as infected with the novel coronavirus. Additionally, one family member who did not travel to Wuhan 
became infected with the virus after several days of contact with four of the family members. So that's some interesting um, stuff that's coming out of The Lancet. So you could check that out. Um, taking a look around countries outside of China, we got this report out of Thailand today, and they reported five additional confirmed cases. So right now, Thailand is up to eight confirmed cases um, just in that country. And there's also now eight, eight cases in Hong Kong. You know, and again, not a big surprise. A lot of people are crossing the borders between China and Hong Kong, and particularly with uh, the Chinese New Year uh, commencing yesterday. And it says the Center for Health Protection of the Department of Health has been investigating three additional imported cases of novel coronavirus. So that brings their total up to eight in addition. And, there, and I also read that there's, uh, I think, three additional cases in Macau. So cases are starting to multiply outside of China. Then this very other, very interesting story out of China, and this is actually from France 24, but they're scrambling to build a big, massive medical center, big hospital in 10 days period. And he, here you can see the picture of all the construction uh, vehicles out there uh, working. And it says China is scrambling to build a 1,000 bed hospital in just 10 days as authorities grapple with a spiraling outbreak of a virus uh, that has left, these numbers are, are not current anymore, so I'm not gonna even go over that, but it's, it's well over 41 dead now. The mobile facility in the central city of Wuhan is expected to be in use by February 3rd. So a week from Monday, a week from tomorrow, they're expecting this 1,000 bed hospital to be erected and, and ready to roll. Uh, state TV showed a flurry of activity at the construction site where dozens of brightly colored diggers and trucks were hard at work. We've mobilized all the workers left in Wuhan to work in shifts to ensure around the clock construction, according to the manager of the building group. The hospital will have the capacity of 1,000 beds spread over 25,000 square meters according to Xinhua News Agency. Uh, Xinhua said that the new facility is aimed at alleviating the shortage of medical treatment resources and improving the ability to, to care for patients. And this all happened because hospitals were just overwhelmed and they were running out of beds for all the uh, infected or potentially infected patients. And this is something that's been seen in the past in China, apparently. And I don't recall this, but it was many years ago. Uh, China has um, a form in building hospitals at short notice. In 2003, uh, the Zhao Tangshan Hospital was built in barely a week to cater to patients suffering from SARS or the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which killed 349 people in mainland China and 299 in Hong Kong um, about 18 years ago. And Wuhan is believed to be using the prefabricated structures of Zhao Tang Shan Hospital as a template for its own model. And uh, yeah, some pretty wild stuff going on over there. And lastly, just something that a lot of people have been talking about more and more as the coronavirus uh, gets so much attention. And th this is from the Oregonian. And it's, a, it's an article that a lot of people are saying that there's something deadlier than the coronavirus that lurks near you, right? And it says, there is a de deadly virus spreading from state to state. It preys on the most vulnerable, striking the sick and the old without mercy. In just the past few months, it has claimed the lives of at least 39 children. This virus is influenza, and it poses a far greater threat to Americans than the coronavirus from China that has made headlines around the world. And that's, that's really, really interesting, too, because... I follow this stuff very, very closely, and my news feeds are just flooded. Everybody's covering coronavirus now. In, in the beginning, not everybody was. It was just, you know, uh, a, a select few. Uh, now this is the, the news of the day, and everybody is, is calling um, or is uh, reporting on, on coronavirus like 24-7 now. No matter what part of the world you're in, they're reporting on this. Um, it says... 
when we think about the relative danger of this new coronavirus and influenza, there's just no comparison, according to Dr. William Schaffner, a professor of preventive medicine and health policy at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Coronavirus will be a blip on the horizon in comparison. The risk is trivial. I don't know if everybody agrees with that, but I mean, compared to influenza in the U.S., that's probably true. Um, to be sure, the coronavirus outbreak, which originated last month in Wuhan, should be taken seriously. The virus can cause pneumonia and is blamed for more than, well, again, the numbers are, are out of date, so I won't bother with that. So influenza rarely gets this sort of attention, even though it kills more Americans each year than any other virus said Dr. Peter Hotez, professor of pediatrics, molecular virology, and microbiology at Baylor. Influenza has already sickened at least 13 million Americans this winter, hospitalizing 120,000 and killing 6,600, according to the CDC. And the flu season hasn't even peaked yet. In a bad year, the flu kills up to 61,000 Americans. Worldwide, the flu, the flu causes up to 5 million cases of severe illness and kills up to 650,000 people every year, according to the World Health Organization. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there so people can kind of keep this in perspective. But it is a very, very important thing, and it is spreading like wildfire. And it's not a big surprise. But we are getting more information, um, some very important information that came out recently about... Uh, it can spread um, before the, oh, what do they say? It can spread uh, pretty early on. And um, let me go back to that real quick. It's contagious during the incubation period. That's what I was going to say, uh, which is different than the SARS coronavirus. So that's a new piece of information that's very, very important. And we see it has an RO of somewhere around 2.6 plus or minus. So. It's roughly as contagious, maybe a little bit less than the flu. I don't exactly I don't exactly remember the flu RO, but it's in that ballpark. But anyway, so this is the latest, and this is really quite a task trying to keep up with all this stuff. It's just pouring out. Um, so I've heard some people say it's a drip, 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 but it's it's a little bit more than a drip, drip, drip. It's really the the information in the news is really pouring out, and a little bit faster than a drip, drip, drip. So. Anyway, I hope you appreciated this uh, uh, latest update report, which is going to be um, old news probably in 20 minutes. But, you know, that's the way it is with the news industry. And I appreciate you watching. Uh, please share this with your friends. Comment below. Let me know how we're doing here at Outbreak News. And uh, I'll see you next time for the next Outbreak News TV.